Well, only admitting that the ADF is committing human rights violations in the West Bank, <clears throat> killing innocent people, uh, even Americans, which, you know, you'd think the U.S. government would care about the IDF killing American citizens, though that barely happens. Uh, the U.S. Is, may possibly put sanctions on the IDF over human rights violations in the West Bank, which is good. This is the first step to the United States actually admitting that the IDF commits human rights violations, just like the Israeli government between Israel and its strongest ally, the U.S. On one hand, the House of Representatives has passed a crucial aid bill that will provide billions to Israel. But amid concerns over human rights violations in the West Bank, including the death of eight-year-old Palestinian-American Omar Assad in 2022, who died after he was handcuffed and gagged in the custody of the Netzer Yehudo Battalion, the U.S. is expected to sanction the IDF for the first time. You would also think that an ally of your nation would care about, you know, people that are citizens to your nation. But the Israeli government doesn't care. This isn't the first time that a Palestinian American has been killed in the West Bank. There was an 18-year-old just a couple months ago that was murdered by uh, Israeli settlers that were that's armed and funded by the Israeli government. Uh, there are terrorists. Republica reported that a special State Department panel recommended months ago that Antony Blinken disqualify multiple Israeli military and police units from receiving U.S. aid, leading Benjamin Netanyahu to come to the defense of his army. Sanctions must not be imposed on the Israel Defense Forces. In recent weeks, I have been working against the imposition of sanctions on Israeli citizens, including in my conversations with senior American government officials. At a time when our soldiers are fighting the monsters of terror, the intention to impose a sanction on a unit in the IDF is the height of absurdity and a moral low. The government headed by me will act by all means against these moves. Well, it, it's funny how he's talking about monsters of terrorism when he's arming and funding Israeli citizens to go into the West Bank Palestinians while being protected by the IDF. How is that not terrorism when the citizens are murdering unarmed uh, Palestinians? That is definitely terrorism. And the settlers are considered illegal under international law. The settlements are considered illegal under international law. So the Israeli government is breaking international law. Questioned over the matter in Italy, Anthony Blinken says he's been consulting with the panel. It's something that takes time, that has to be done very carefully, both in collecting the facts and analyzing them. And that's exactly what we've done. And I think it's fair to say that um, you'll see results very soon. I've made determinations. You can expect to see them in the days ahead. The Netzer Yehuda Battalion was formed as a special unit for ultra-Orthodox soldiers. Over the years, the unit stationed in the West Bank became a destination for many young right-wing settlers who weren't accepted into other combat units in the IDF. The US State Department started investigating the battalion in 2022 after its soldiers were involved in several incidents of violence against Palestinian citizens.